You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. clutter of parenting advice and overcome the pressure to be a perfect mom and raise perfect kids. Welcome to Moms Without Worry with host Dr. Karen Cassidy. Karen encourages you to embrace the messy hilarity of parenting by explaining the scientific strategies that will help you and your kids thrive with authenticity, joy, and good humor. So please welcome the host of Moms Without Worry, Karen Cassidy. Welcome to Moms Without Worry. I'm your host, Dr. Karen Cassidy, and you are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Have you ever wondered what happened to your peace of mind between your vow to be the best mom ever and all the dirty diapers, preschool playdates, homework projects, and teen drama? Have you secretly wished you could move to a magic country that has no standardized testing, no college entrance exams, and no tantrums in public? Have you gone online about a parenting problem and been confused by all of the contradictory advice and opinions? Or have you worried that your style of parenting is somehow bad for your kid? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you are in the right place. So I want you to grab your latte or your tea, sit down and relax, and get ready to join me and my guest as we develop clarity and unshakable self-confidence in our parenting and get comfortable raising our kids based on who they really are instead of who others say they should be. I want you to remember to join me on the Facebook Moms Without Worry community group where you can watch free videos on the latest best advice on parenting and becoming a mom without worry. And then you also can download the weekly challenge sheets for this show that can help you follow through with the great advice you get from our guests. First, to help get you in the right frame of mind, I've got a couple of fun fact questions. So first... What is the most common complication of childbirth? So what's the most common complication of childbirth? Second, what percentage of dads develop postpartum depression? And lastly, what percentage of moms with postpartum depression also have anxiety like panic attacks, worry, or OCD? If you're listening in live, you can go to 866-451-1451 to call in and give us your answer or ask questions or share your stories with us. And again, that number is 866-451-1451. So today we are talking about a topic near and dear to my heart, postpartum depression and anxiety. It's something that I suffered from with my first pregnancy and delivery. It's something my mother suffered from and my sister. And for generations back, it's been in my family with aunts as well. And our special guest today has had that challenge and is working through that herself. I want to introduce Brittany Brittany Champlin. Brittany is an Uh, independent health and wellness consultant and also an Arbonne independent and consultant. She is a new mom to this darling little girl, Lily, who's only six months old. And she is a mom who is right now trying to start a movement to help moms get the proper mental health care that they need during this postpartum period. She also has a background in naturopathy and in holistic health And she shares an important commonality with you and so many other moms. She's had to deal with the challenge of postpartum depression. So, Brittany, I want to welcome you to Moms Without Worry. 
Thank you so much for having me. And Lily, she's here too. Oh, awesome. All right. We've got a twosome there. So first, I want to thank you for being so courageous and vulnerable to join me on this show and to talk about your journey with postpartum depression and to do it knowing that you aren't completely out of the tunnel there. And one of the saddest things that I see when women come into my office or talk with me is that over and over I see all that postpartum depression and anxiety is under-recognized, it's under-treated, and it's often dismissed as being the product of poor coping, a bad relationship with your partner, or failure to bond with your baby. And many, many moms who have this suffer alone, and they don't get the help and the recognition they need. And I am so glad that you're coming out of the closet and you're willing to tell your story. So I would love for you to start by telling us, Brittany, what happened when you first started to notice like things were not going well for you? What was your first tip off? Um, so just for like a little bit of history for anybody listening, um, I did have Lily six months ago, like Karen mentioned, and um, I was going home and dead set as a stubborn mule, like my husband says, on um, having Lily on a natural birth. I actually found out I was pregnant while in medical school for naturopathic medicine up in Toronto, Canada. But I am a U.S.-born citizen, so I actually have come back to the States to have Lily. Um, yeah. And so I moved to a whole new place. So I'm not originally from the Midwest here. Uh, I am from the East Coast. And... Uh, Derek and I moved and lived together on the West Coast, and then I was kind of all over the place. And then I found out I was pregnant. That was a huge uh, life shift, right? So yeah, I found out I was pregnant. I just finished my first semester of naturopathic school. I passed all my classes. I was feeling really great. And then I found out I was pregnant. And, and you know, for women out there, stress and, and um you know, just life sometimes gets so busy that you don't even realize that you miss the cycle uh, unless you're, like, mm-hmm. super keen on, on following your cycle and tracking all that. And so I missed the cycle while in finals for uh, medical school, and I had 12 back-to-back finals within two weeks. Uh, oh, so my gosh. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't even just forget I had a had to have my period. I forgot to probably eat and sleep and do all the other basic things. So, but... Um, You know, so it didn't even occur to me that that could be a, you know, distant possibility until I got home for Christmas break. And then I was like, well, you know, that never happened. I should probably check on that. And (laughs) lo and behold, I was, (laughs) I was pregnant and, um, you, the second of many quarter life crises and, um, you know, I had to come to a decision and, uh, I think I just had a lot of life changes happen all in one year's time, right? So I was yeah. starting medical school. I, I had to stop. I, you know, moved to Canada. I had to move back to the States to a new place. It was the middle of winter. And for anybody who is in the Midwest knows that last February we had a polar vortex that was like negative, I don't even know, 40 degrees or some crazy thing. And so yeah. I got here and I was like, what? is happening like (laughs) Mm -hmm. and um so there was a lot of background history there that I think definitely aided in kind of that slow but you know momentous building of a of a snowball effect essentially with anxiety and depression I had no family here living I you know moved to a new place I had no friends Derek my husband had little jobs. He was Abbott. He worked out in Southern California and Temecula and moved to the Chicago headquarters to, you know, have a new experience and also be closer to me. So we were both going through a ton of changes. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we were just casually becoming parents and husband and wife. And so, you know, the day she was born was. Yeah. Was, was really well, the, big, well, one thing that. Yeah, that you're talking about that I think many, many mothers don't recognize is oftentimes it's during pregnancy that things start to fall apart. And that was certainly true for me. I had a high-risk pregnancy. It was hideous stress. 
there were various times I thought I might lose it and um, it uh, and I was sick it was crazy and oftentimes from anywhere it starts then it's not just after the delivery we're going to take a quick break here and I want you to stay around because we're going to be talking more about what happens when women have to deal with postpartum depression and anxiety this is Dr. Karen Cassidy your host on Moms Without Worry on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back. It's Dr. Karen Cassidy with my special guest, um, health and wellness consultant, Brittany Champlin, and also new mom to Lily, six months old. Um, Brittany, you were telling us about the the period before you had your baby, and it's something many women don't recognize as that's oftentimes when the risk factors start mounting and symptoms start happening, but they don't realize it. What happened when it came time to give birth? Because I, I know I've talked to you earlier, and, and you had this, um, I'll call it the perfect woman's natural birth plan. What, <laughs> what really happened? Tell me about it. Um, yeah, so like I said, based off my history, I was in naturopathic school. So for anybody who's out there, I think now the new term is crunchy granola for people who are like hippies Mm -hmm. (laughs) and want to want to have their kids all natural and with a doula and no medication and you know and that was 110 percent me (laughs) um but when i first moved out here i was already pregnant but i had no idea how far along i was or any information so um here in the Midwest, we had to find, you know, I just found the nearest hospital and got an appointment with an OBGYN and got all that stuff kind of rolling because, like I said, I was new here. So I didn't have any of my doctors. I didn't have any anybody that I knew, right? So yeah. I was essentially starting from scratch. And, and so I was just trying to do what the Kool-Aid, right? I drank the Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. What's, what's everybody else doing? I went to the OB. I had my ultrasound. I, you know got my what to expect book and and I was just so caught up in in all of life's changes I was like oh my goodness and I think that the point where I kind of snapped back into my senses was when my husband and I had asked our OBGYN at the time when the last time was that they had had a natural birth at the hospital and she stuttered and she had no idea She had no idea. And, you know, the term for natural birth has kind of gotten 
defined in different ways these days. Sometimes it's like, oh, I had natural childbirth, but with an epidural or natural mm-hmm. childbirth, you know, and there's all these different kind of connotations of natural childbirth. For me and my definition was no medication, no epidural. I had freedom to move around. I wasn't hooked up to any IVs. Um, you know, yeah. I was in charge. This is this is my experience, my husband's experience, and that's how it should be. I shouldn't feel like I'm not in uh, the driver's seat because this is my yeah. body, and, and, and I wanted to be in the driver's seat. So when she said that, I was absolutely in shock. My husband and I were like, what do we do? And, you know, the week's... Uh, I think they say as a mom, the days are long, but the, the years are short, right? So in pregnancy, mm-hmm. the you know, the days can be very long sometimes and achy and, and hard on you. And then the, the weeks just seem to fly by and all of a sudden you're at your, you know, <laughs> 20-week ultrasound appointment, like seeing your baby on the screen. And you're like, oh, my gosh, yeah. what's happening? Um, so, you know, we didn't find out the sex. I was really anxious, actually. That was kind of probably a red flag we should have picked up on. I was really anxious yes. about the ultrasound. I was really nervous something was going to be wrong. They were going to find something wrong. And, you know, I was just, mm-hmm. just yeah, I had those pre, yeah. pre-exam jitters of sorts. And, and, I mean, there was a few nights there that my husband, like, I actually think I was having a panic attack. And I didn't yeah. know it at the time, but I would wake up. And, you know, your dreams can get pretty, I think, defensive, right? Like when you're yeah. pregnant, you can have a lot that's happening in your body. And it's not just throwing a baby. It's not just, yeah. you know, it's a it's, lot of changes. Yeah, so you were kind of thrown into this situation where during the last uh, trimester, you ended up switching doctors. Uh, yeah. So you could have a midwife, and here you are, and then you're hoping for this um you know, wonderful experience. What really happened? <laughs> um, so I thought I had gone into labor. We but we had kind of that pre labor scare about a week prior to actually having Lily. Um, and my doula Amanda. If anybody needs a doula in the Midwest, go to Amanda. <laughs> she's the bomb. Um, <laughs> for but um, yeah, she. She coached me through so much and and I wanted, you know, my husband and I wanted to do it like as a couple, but I was like, you know, it's obviously my first time going through this. I would really, really love to have a little bit of support. Someone who knows these things that if we're freaking out, they're like, that's totally normal, you know? So, yeah. um, Especially because I wanted to do it all natural. So I actually had Lily up at the Authentic Birth Center up in Wauwatosa in Wisconsin. And I found them by the grace of God, uh, uh, 26 and a half weeks mm. and they don't yeah. take patients past 27 weeks. Right. So yeah. I yeah. found them, they did an open house. I was like, I am going here. Right. They had the bathtub for birthing, um, you know, the whole nine, it was a beautiful place. Um, and they did a beautiful job and, and, uh, so I switched. And so there, therein lies another change, right. In the whole, big story and it's big shift you have to trust somebody that's new to you and you're heading towards the end of your pregnancy and um you know I was nannying for a family locally just to try to kind of get my feet wet with kids again and I love kids and I've always worked with kids and um so you know I was just trying to basically scrape together what I could uh yeah. prior to Lily making her grand entrance you know and the birth yeah. went in my opinion, the birth went amazing. Was it painful mm-hmm. as all hell? Yep, it was definitely mm-hmm. painful. Yeah. I uh, I went into what my doula called like birth, like la la land almost. And uh, you don't really know what's going on, honestly. And it's your body's coping mechanism because you're going through an extremely big moment in yeah. your in your body's right. life, you know. Right. And um, so she did a wonderful job of coaching me verbally. I needed that, like, kind of coach in the ear, like, keep your yeah. voice low, you know, you know, switch. Yeah. They had me, Karen, <laughs> yeah. doing, after 20 hours of labor, I was doing deep squats, like, butt to the ground, in the shower, deep squats, uh, and... <laughs> And I was crying, and I'm like, I'm going to poop myself. I can't do this. Like, you yeah. know, it's just like you're as exposed as you've ever been in your whole life. 
everybody's watching you and uh you know and you just yes. You just yeah. You just feel like it's unreal. It is unreal. Yeah. yeah, but one thing that you're bringing up here um, that's very that is this is you had an exhausting experience, and yeah. that's something that can set women up too. Um, we're going to come back in just a minute. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry, and we're coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it i am so glad you're still with us this is dr karen cassidy your host on moms without worry and i have with me Brittany champlin my special guest who is a health and wellness consultant um you know Brittany, you were talking about, you know, one thing that does, we know, puts moms at risk is when they have, um, they're basically just exhausted and run down um, from the whole pregnancy, the delivery experience, and then what happens to many mothers over the next uh, couple of days to up to a year after the birth is they start getting the insidious onset of symptoms. Um, postpartum depression and anxiety. And I know for myself, um, I started getting terrible, terrible fatigue. And uh, and I didn't recognize it as a beginning symptom. So I'm curious, what um, what happened to you? So uh, it was probably about two and a half weeks after giving birth. We had had some family out visiting. And Derek had, through his job, two weeks of paternity leave and he decided to take one of the weeks right after I gave birth to Lily and then he saved the other one for around the holiday time um, to be able to take off so we could travel and and go see family Um, and so about two and a half weeks after all the guests had stopped visiting uh, Derek was back at work and Lily and I were eye to eye in the kitchen and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. This is a very tiny human and 110% solely dependent on me. And I am on an island, you know, and it was terrifying. I remember her having a stuffy nose and me trying to use the bulb for the first time and her screaming and like, you know, how babies are. They kind of just yeah. want to wiggle right out of your arms. And, and even though they're tiny and not really have that much motor control they're so strong and and you know i felt like i was hurting her with the nose bulb and and 
you know, I was trying to learn how to breastfeed and I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just hoping, <laughs> hoping it would all work out. And, uh, you know, I had done a lot of reading, a lot of research on birth and how to have a natural birth and watching people have natural birth and even, even a little bit on breastfeeding. But my main focuses were during the pregnancy, which is common, right? Like you're focused mm-hmm. on the pregnant wife, you're focused on the mom to be, um, you know, I was super, super intense about my nutrition too. During that time, I was utilizing um, recommendations out of the book by a woman named Lily Nicholson. I think Nicholson mm-hmm. is her last name, and and she's a registered dietitian, and she has a book called uh, uh, Real Nutrition for Pregnancy, and it's a great book. A lot of my naturopathic friends. Uh, who are doctors, practicing doctors use yeah. it. So I had all this information and then all of a sudden, you know, the big day came and passed and all the visitors came and left and I didn't really know. I didn't do the research on the after side. <laughs> and yeah. like they said, there's no guidebook for parenthood. There's no guidebook for yeah. raising a kid. And, well, you're yeah. bringing up such a, a wonderful point, which is you can find so much information about what's happening to your uterus and what's happening to the developing baby and your breasts. But when it yeah. comes to your mind, um, the main information you get is, oh, you're going to fall in love with your baby. And and then right. people kind of joke about, ha ha, you won't get any sleep, but no right. one talks about this side of, you know, what happens when you start feeling like um, I am catastrophically not up to this. And, yep. and this thing that I so longed for is turning into a nightmare. And, uh, you know, and I wish there was a what to expect when you're expecting all about just your mind. And yeah, what's going to happen mother, even. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just a, what to expect as a new mom. Like, and I'm sure there are those types of books that exist out there, but then therein lies another issue is for me well, they're personally. In, uh, I they're have... like therapist manuals. Um, they're not, yeah. I don't, if you go to yeah. the self-help book. Yeah. I know we have a guest who's called in. Um, hello, who is it? <laughs> or, or Sean. Yeah. yeah. Hi, this is Dr. Cassidy. <laughs> Hi, it looks like we're having a little bit of trouble getting the sound through there. Um, I'm going to have my engineer work on that a little bit. Uh, but anyway, but we were, you know, we're talking about that. So like you started noticing these feelings of, it sounds like anxiety, being overwhelmed, yeah. um, feeling yeah. um, inadequate. And, you know, and one thing I want to point out to mothers is when we're having postpartum depression, and anxiety, it's more than feeling uncertain or inexperienced. It's like being um, slammed by a semi-truck trailer with terrible (laughs) doubt, with panic attacks. I know I started to get anxiety attacks in the middle of nowhere. I'd be working and all of a sudden I'd have an attack and I'd be like, "Why why is this happening? And I wrote it off to, oh, it must be hormones. What else did you notice when you started to realize looking back, like, uh uh-oh, I'm heading in the wrong direction. Yeah, I think it's kind of a blur, to be honest, but um, I think the panic attacks were a big one. I mean, every morning, um, even, you know, after a night of breastfeeding, right, because you don't really get a a night's sleep in the beginning, um, Mm -hmm. I, my husband would be getting ready for work, and I would have a full-fledged panic attack can't get off the couch begging him not to leave me by Mm -hmm. myself with Lily home I was terrified and I had many of those and I'm I know that it was terrifying for him because he didn't know what to do either we're both new parents um we're both new to this whole experience and um then now he has not only a new baby to try to learn but a new, a new mom. And I, and I really do believe like the day a baby is born, you, a mom is also born. A mom yeah. is also born, you know? Right. And, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, and this brings up another thing is oftentimes your partner or your family are 
just as confused as you are. And it makes it really hard to even think like, uh, what's going on? What should I do? Um, We're going to be right back. We've got another break. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy with my special guest, Brittany Champlin, um, health and wellness coach and Arbonne Independent Consultant. You're listening live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy on Moms Without Worry on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm here with my special guest, Brittany Champlin. And we have a caller. I'd love to say welcome to Moms Without Worry. What's your question or comment? I don't have any questions, but I think it's just very informative to hear all of this. I've never had a baby, but I'm 22 years old and I feel like at this age, it's great to hear these types of things and to be aware of everything that could happen and how to approach it when it does happen. You are so wise. I want to give you a big shout out because <laughs> we're one of the things I'm going to talk about later is the single most likely complication of pregnancy is postpartum depression and anxiety. And that's the truth. And it's something that no one screens for or talks about unless it's one of those few centers in the United States that is uh, um, geared towards postpartum problems. Thank you for calling in. Mm -hmm. Shout out to you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Brittany, could you tell us, you know, when how bad were things when they were at their worst? Because I know you ended up just becoming... um, completely undone by your postpartum depression and anxiety. Tell us what happened and what led to you, you know, getting treatment and being hospitalized. Yeah. So, um, you know, it started with the panic attacks and, and, you know, my husband was just trying to figure out what to do and he would stay home. He would call in, he was working remote. Um, and eventually, you know, we had to call and we had to lean in and ask for help. We didn't, this was outside of our, our control um, and it's nobody's fault. I want anybody who's listening to know that if you're a mom, if you're not a mom, if you have a mom, it's not their fault. Uh, it's a lot of times a mix of different, a cocktail of different experiences and, you know, uh, and hormones and all of the changes you're going through. And it's so, so, so common. It's just the fact that nobody talks about it. Um, and so that's kind of my goal here is to talk about it. So, yeah, I, yeah. I was having panic attacks uh, and not like a I'm nervous to go on stage and talk panic attack. I was like couldn't get off the couch, sat in the same spot, breastfed, didn't eat until Derek came home at night 
panic attack. Um, and yeah. after a panic attack, it is so much energy. If you think about it like this, a panic attack or depression is your body's two versions of uh, survival, right? So yeah. if you are in fight or flight, you're in that anxiety space and, and you are all your body's mechanisms are focused on getting you the hell out of whatever you're in and Mm -hmm. you will become desperate. You will, you will do things you would never do in a conscious sound mind body. And then when you come out of a panic attack, like for me, it's such an energy expenditure. You become depressed because you're so exhausted. And then on top of it, you know, when you're breastfeeding, you're burning upwards of 500 calories per feeding. So here I am not putting anything into my body, burning calories via breastfeeding and having panic attacks. And then I was so severely depressed, to be completely honest, and and, uh, this could be a trigger for some people listening. Um, In all honesty, I had severe suicidal ideation. Yeah, Um, yeah. I could could see myself dying many times over, and it was – the darkest time of my life uh and that is the truth that's the honesty and that yeah. you know yeah thank you for saying that because this is something where many mothers are afraid to disclose the horrible thoughts that they get whether it's i want to kill myself i just want to get away um, I can't take the baby anymore, or they get intrusive thoughts or obsessions about what if they stab the baby or harm the baby, and they're afraid someone is going to misunderstand them as a child abuser and take the right. baby away. And I know for me, um, it was when I started getting suicidal thoughts that I finally realized, oh my gosh, I've got postpartum depression. And I was a psychologist with a license. And, and it was because I was in the same mode you're in was I was just surviving and trying to get through the next moment. And I got to where I couldn't sing to my child. I had no positive feelings. It was just slogging and no amount of sleep could make me feel refreshed. Um, right. you know, so, so one thing I'm just going to go through a quick list here of, you know, what we know about postpartum depression. So the first thing is we know that the symptoms can happen anywhere from a couple of days after delivery up to one year. And we know that um, this can happen up to one in five mothers. And, uh, you know, and people don't think of it. That is, that is the most common complication. And we know that um, if in terms of risk factors, if you have a previous mental health history of any kind, you are at much higher risk. And you ought to be talking with your ob gyne, with your therapist, with your psychiatrist, your nurse practitioner about your plan um, after you deliver the baby. And we know that if you have an unwanted pregnancy or unplanned pregnancy, if you have high blood glucose levels, so if you have type 2 diabetes or diabetes and you're having trouble managing, that puts you at risk. And then the single biggest factor we know that pushes women over the edge is broken sleep. And we found that if women do not get a five to six hour stretch of sleep during that early postpartum period fairly consistently, then we know they're going to be in the high risk group for getting postpartum depression. And I know that happened to you and that certainly happened to me um, where I was in a relationship where my uh, then husband believed that because I had the boobs that were producing milk that I should handle all the nighttime duty. And I was also working full time and, uh, and I didn't, I just, I was so in the survival that it didn't even occur to me. We know when you have life stressors, smoking, alcohol use, and then if you have an infant that has colic or chronic health conditions that are hard to manage, or if you have lack of social support before, during, or after the birth. And, you know, I know when I look at that list and you just described that list, um, right. No wonder we ended up where we did. Uh, and, and then the other thing we see is we know that estrogen levels drop 100 to 1,000 percent in mother's brains in that postnatal period, and it messes with monoamine oxidase inhibitors that can bring on these symptoms. Um, so we're going to take another little break here, and we're going to talk about treatment 
and access to care. And I know Brittany has some really great observations here that I want you all to hear. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy on Moms Without Worry on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio Live. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from France. International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866 244 5679 and feel the glory. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Moms, welcome back. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry with my special guest, Brittany Champlin. And um, we're talking about postpartum depression. Um, Brittany, can you tell me what kind of things you did to get treatment? Because for me, medication and therapy um, saved my life and uh, the life of my family. And I am so grateful I I had easy access because I was a mental health professional. I knew what to do and where to go. But I know your story is more like what happens to most moms. Could you tell me about when you went to the emergency room? Sure, yeah. So, um, you know, like I said, two and a half weeks after I had Lily, I noticed these symptoms starting, and it wasn't slowly. It was intense and all at once. And, you know, when you're in that fight-or-flight mode, you're not in research mode like I usually am. I usually am so good at finding resources and I couldn't even talk to anybody Karen I I would get super isolated I would you know hole up and thank God for my husband for you know having an understanding of depression and anxiety um, because I can't even imagine going through what I did um, without him and you know so he reached out to his parents I reached out to my aunt uh, and my, some of my extended family and, and, you know, everybody was just rambling, scrambling, trying to find resources, reaching out to people they knew. Um, you know, his parents came from Michigan to Wisconsin several times to take care of us, uh, to take care of Lily, to help sleep train Lily. Um, and it was amazing. And I'm so grateful for all their help, but that, that shouldn't be what the story is you know it shouldn't fall on just the family to all of a sudden become mental health professionals um and you know if if, if you've ever heard or seen or read um you know suicide prevention they're like number one thing call 911 call the crisis hotline Mm -hmm. and i've done both of those things multiple times uh the police came and did a wellness check at my home while i was in the middle of a panic attack um, you know, I, I called the crisis hotline and they were like, are you trying to actively kill yourself? And I was like, wow, that was not helpful. Um, no, yeah, I'm, obviously, yeah. I'm obviously calling you because I'm 
trying not to feed into those thoughts. So anything other than that question would probably be helpful. Um, and then we went to our local emergency room here in Kenosha, Wisconsin um, at Frederick Hospital. And from what I recall, they had never had a postpartum mom uh, come into their emergency room. So they had wow. no idea what to wow. do with me. Um, and it was horrible. I remember sitting on the bed and I had just, I think, fed Lily and, you know, I had no offense to male nurses, but, you know, uh, a male came into the room to ask me about my suicidal thoughts. And I was like, are we kidding right now? Um, and thankfully, being in such a sterile and scary environment, I was able to kind of snap out of panic mode and go into survival mode. And, and you know, they were like, well, we don't really know. We don't have all these resources. We have a few, but the wait for a psychiatrist is probably about three months. And yep. um, you're going to need to tell us you're safe enough to go home so we can discharge you. So I had to say, I'm fine. I'm no longer having suicidal thoughts. Please send me home. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's so sad. And then I know you then made the very brave choice to voluntarily go inpatient because you realized you just were not getting any care. And, yeah. and then, um, you know, yeah. and, and you went to a psychiatric facility that is actually a wonderful psychiatric facility, but they weren't set up for patients like you. What happened? Tell me about that. Yeah. So we did try therapy, um, but two, two appointments a week for an hour just was not cutting it. And I was actually really mad at my therapist at the time because, she was very focused on trying to get me mentally prepared for the holidays, which were coming up, which I was having multitude of panic attacks because I didn't want to see my family like this. Some of my family was having a really hard time understanding what I was going through. Um, and the holidays, just everybody knows, brings an extra level of pressure. And she made the executive decision and said, you guys, I, I really recommend you guys go inpatient and I will call up and, and try to get you in. And going inpatient is an extraordinarily difficult thing to do and takes so much courage from whether or not you're voluntarily going or not. It, it's a very intense place to go to. And, you know, I had my husband drive me up there and, you know, and, and we kind of laughed because I actually went there on Halloween and we're sitting in the in the waiting room since I voluntarily went there. And the nurse that came out to get me literally had a devil costume on, like <laughs> horns and a tail. And oh. it was like, it was like a brief moment of like hysteria because like, this is the woman who's bringing me back into the psych facility. And I'm sure she never thought twice about what she was wearing, but to somebody who's dealing with such dark thoughts, like, and if you're of faith or not of faith, like, this is not a sign you want to yeah. see. Um, yeah. And I had, you know, I had to have a cavity check uh, because sometimes people are sneaking in drugs or who knows yeah. what. And, and I had just given birth. So my bottom part was pretty not together. Um, I can't recall if I'm still bleeding at the time, but. Yeah. Um, you know, you just, you just gave birth, you just birthed yeah. a human. And I was having to bend over and have a fucking cavity check. Um, yeah. I had all the strings cut out of my clothes. I, yeah. um, I had to, um, you know, you have a roommate and your roommate can be dealing with a, a slew of different types of mental health issues. Yeah. And I even, yeah. I even had to be, I even had to be watched when I, I took the breast pump to the facility and I think I'm the first person to, to have ever done that in an inpatient psych facility because it was totally outside their scope. And, and, uh, they, I had to have someone watch me breast pump. Yeah. The yeah. Facility. And then, and then you were only allowed to see your daughter for an hour every evening because the standard unit policy in a psych unit is family can only visit. And it's not, it's not mom friendly. Um, and I, you know, thank you for being so open and honest because, you know, this is a problem. And one thing this addresses is we don't yet have all the resources that mothers need in terms of postpartum care. One of the newest drugs, Brexalinone, um, is an IV. You have to be in the hospital for 60 hours to get it. 
but it's so outrageously expensive and only at a few places most moms can't get it. And so there's a big problem with access. Um, we're going to take one last break here. And when we come back, um, Brittany is going to give you her three hottest tips for what to do if you think you are dealing with postpartum depression or anxiety. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host with special guest Brittany Champlin on Moms Without Worry on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes someone is sexually assaulted and every 10 minutes a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing, and it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be, healed, hopeful, happy. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live. So first, the answer to those fun fact questions. So you now know the most common complication of childbirth is postpartum depression. One in five women experience this. We also know that 10% of all dads develop postpartum depression. So let's not leave the guys out when we're checking for things going well or not going so well. And then also we know that um, the percentage of moms who have anxiety, such as panic attacks, worry, intrusive thoughts, and OCD is 64%. So it's not just depression, moms. It's also anxiety. That is very common. So um, we know that the best treatments that we can get now are whatever works. And number one means getting your sleep. And this is one of the first things your doctor is going to say to you or your therapist, getting good nutrition, getting social support, getting medication when you need it, and getting hospitalization when you need it. So, Brittany, I'd love to hear what are your three best recommendations to moms if they think they might be suffering from, you know, postpartum depression and or anxiety? Yeah, I mean... I did have to end up going on medication. I am on Zoloft. That was what was best recommended by my midwives, and I kind of did as much research as I could because I wanted mm -hmm. to still breastfeed. So there's, although I shamed and blamed and guilted myself for having to start an antidepressant after giving birth naturally, I want people to know there is no shame in having to take something if you yes. are in crisis. You were yes. in crisis, you were in fight and flight, you you got to, you know, swallow your pride, swallow your ego. And it's not easy, but you need it so you can at least get yeah. a little bit of that cloud. Um, yeah, I love that. Best, yeah. Yeah. The next best tip and my probably number one tip is find your tribe, find a community that's going to support you and keep reaching out to you and not give up on you. And um, for me, my tribe came from my um you know, extended family and my husband's family and um, 
from my family with the Arbonne community. Arbonne's a yeah. global health and wellness company, and, and they're based in seven different countries. And a girlfriend of mine was also going through postpartum depression. She found her tribe of, of support through Arbonne, and that's why she invited me into that business. And now I'm helping people change their lives through nutrition yeah. and access to safe safe products. So I'm really grateful. Yeah, and I and the other thing I love that you represent that um, is so great is you were persistent and you didn't stop until you started finding solutions that worked for you and you were willing to recognize everything I'm trying isn't working. And that takes great courage and that really is one thing I want to recommend to all of you moms is don't settle for less. Talk to anyone and everyone until you get what you need to help stop the suffering and help restore your sense of self. You do not have to suffer with chronic postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, you know, Brittany, I know that some of our listeners are going to want to reach out to you. Um, where can they reach you? Um, lots of places, but I have a website for my business, brittanychamplin.arbon.com. If you're interested in joining my team, working with me, or you're just a mom in need of support, please reach out on there. My email's on there. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm going to do, moms, yeah, is I'm going to put a link to that. And would you be willing to give out your Instagram too? Sure. Yeah. My Instagram is w.grace. Dot and dot love. <laughs> All, so right. It's grace. All right. It's with yeah. grace and love. Super. So I'm going to put that on our weekly challenge sheet with Brittany's um, hot tips, as well as um, a summary of some of the information here about postpartum depression and anxiety. And I urge you when this podcast, uh, when this radio show comes out as a podcast on iHeartRadio, share it with your friends. And this is Dr. Karen Cassidy saying, thank you, all my wonderful moms. Please like us and join us on the Facebook community Moms Without Worry page. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Moms Without Worry with your host, Dr. Karen Cassidy. Join the conversation each week as Karen provides a simple yet clear roadmap for helping parents strengthen the connection with their children on Karen Cassidy's Moms Without Worry. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.